It's Paul Harris filling in for McGraw all week long, and Kelly Jackson is here with me, and we're honored now to be joined by uh, Colonel Ed Scholl, retired uh, member of uh, the U.S. Army, and uh, one of the guys who uh, took part 10 years ago in a, a recreation of Lewis and Clark's expedition up the Missouri River and all the way to the Northwest Passage. Uh, of course, Lewis and Clark did it in 1804. Colonel Scholl and a bunch of other recreators did it in 2004 and five and six. Is that correct, Colonel? That's, that's correct. Three, welcome, three years. Welcome to the show. We're happy to have you here. Thank you. And greetings from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, we're, we're happy to have you here. Uh, I should point out that the Colonel is going to be talking about this at the Discovery Expedition in St. Charles, Bishop's Landing, uh, over on Riverside Street in St. Charles, uh, right there on the uh, Missouri Riverfront. Uh, for the next three days, you can stop in and say hello to him between 9 and 5. And he also has written about this in a, a book called Lewis and Clark in the 21st Century. How did you get involved in this project in the first place? All right. I uh, was involved with the elder hostel programs. These are senior citizen educational programs in a country. And in, eight, in uh, 2001, I took a, uh, a bus ride with 42 other people along the uh, Lewis and Clark Trail from St. Charles to the Fort Clapsock, Oregon. And when I had seen what these men had seen and done, we saw the highlights. I had to get involved. So when I got back, I surfed the Internet. I found this organization. The Discovery Expedition of St. Charles was planning a reenactment in 03. I sent them an email. I have an interest. I got an email back. Welcome aboard. And that's how I got involved with the reenactment. Yeah. And then in 04, you actually went. And this time you weren't on a bus. You were actually on the river, right? Yeah, but it was 03. Oh, you were <laughs> the 03. original expedition. Uh, the question is, did it start in uh, Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, where the kill boat was built, or was it Pittsburgh? We started in Elizabeth just to cover all bases. And we started there in uh, August of 03. We traveled on 10 rivers. I won't say different rivers because one river changed names twice. We can cover that later on if you have time. Mm -hmm. And uh, down the Ohio River and up the Mississippi River to Wood River, Illinois, which is uh, directly across the river from the confluence of the Missouri River and the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. Then in uh, in May of uh, 04, we started up the Missouri River like they did, 1,400 miles up to the Mandan Indian villages, which is about 50 miles from Canada. So it gives you an idea of where we traveled. Did you wear 21st century clothing, or were you dressed like Lewis and Clark and their expedition? We dressed what we call period clothing. We were dressed in the uniforms of the soldiers of 1803 and 1804. Okay, now we know what it's like in St. Louis in the summertime when we're wearing nice, soft, light cotton clothing. I'm guessing you were in heavy wool uniforms. What was that like? And well, a life jacket. Pardon me? And a life jacket, too, right? <laughs> that's another story <laughs> yes we had life jackets required those going through the locks on the various rivers uh, the clothing we wore were basically cotton that oh. is a white uniform because uh we had a dress coat a blue coat which was wool and as you say it was uncomfortably warm and we were soldiers sailing boats so we were uh, on the river and the original expedition the uh, journals mentioned a lot of rain and we had rain going up the missouri river out of uh St. Charles here and up until oh, South Dakota before our shoes dried out. But, uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. And so, they, they mentioned that also, and we had the same experiences that they had at the time. You had their original journals, and you followed it as much as you possibly could. But my question to you is, have the rivers changed in those 200 years? Absolutely. There was one river out of 10 that did not have a dam on it. All other rivers have dams, and with the dams, they have locks on the, on the uh, Ohio River, 20 locks, and as you mentioned, Kelly, life jackets are required going through the locks. Mm-hmm. So we had some problems that the original expedition did not have. They had free-flowing water from, coast for, from Pittsburgh to the West Coast. We had dams on all except the Clearwater River. And the Clearwater River in Idaho, about 70 miles, was undammed. There had a lot of rapids in that river. We turned one boat over which they did also on their journals, in their trip, in their journals. What kind of boats were you in? Okay, the original expedition started from Pittsburgh and was called a keel boat. Keel boat is as large as a tractor trailer. It's 55 feet long, 8 feet wide. It carries 8 tons of supplies. It takes about 8 or 9 men to, to, to run it. Then we had two perros. One was 39 feet, one was 41 feet. They were the perros that we took out. Of, well, one perro was purchased by Lewis in the... Uh, in Wheeling, West Virginia, to pick up supplies out of a, out of an arsenal in uh, West Virginia, 
And then we had the White Perot picked up in Kaskaskia, Illinois, because he had picked up 14 soldiers out of Fort Kaskaskia to join him on the expedition. That's another story. How many men were on the expedition? If you ask the question, Pittsburgh, it was one. He was the only one. Mm -hmm. But going up the Missouri River, he had 46 men going up the Missouri River to Fort Mandan. The important number to remember is 33. Because 33 men, I say people, because one was a woman. Who yep. was that, Kelly? Okay. That would be Julia, Julia, yeah. right? Yes. She joined the expedition at Fort Mandan in North Dakota, and 33 people went from North Dakota to the Pacific Ocean and then back to St. Louis the following year at 06. Did you pick up a woman on the way? I mean that in the nicest possible way, Colonel. <laughs> yes, we had. As a matter of fact, when we were up in uh, Fort Mandan, there was a girl, uh, Jessica Grinnell. She was a Mandan Indian, and we had parades wherever we went. We were in a parades or had meetings, and uh, she was uh, asked, the, the tribe asked us if we could use one of their girls for a uh, 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 soccer joy. Absolutely. And she had a two-year-old boy at the time. Mm -hmm. So that fit right in with our expedition. And we had two or three women on us who were with us who were wives of the expedition. And when we needed a Jack of Julia, we had her on a trip. I want to go back to the dams and the rivers for just uh, a moment. Yes. Uh, you had 39, 40-foot-long boats. What, what do you do when you get to a dam and you're going up river? All of our boats were trailered. We got the Upper Missouri River from Yankton, South Dakota, the Gavin Point Dam. There's six dams between there and the Rocky Mountains, and none of them have a, a the a, you're going around the dam. You have to take the boat out and put it in a river above the dam. Mm -hmm. Now, we ran into a problem because portaging around the dams, you put the boat in the bo river above the dam, and they were in a seven-year drought. So 30 to 40 miles above the dam, we, the boat ramps don't meet the water anymore. Oh, no. So we couldn't get our boats out upriver, so we had to be careful. Now, they didn't have this problem. Uh, we, our three boats had motors in them. And the reason we have motors in them is because the United States Coast Guard said the boats this size will be motorized when on navigable waters. Mm -hmm. They define navigable waters as the Ohio River, the Mississippi River, and the Lower Missouri River. And the reason I have motors is because they get out of the way of tow boats pushing barges and other commercial traffic. Yeah, I was going to ask you if the river boat traffic was a problem. Yes, it was. To a point, uh, we had, uh, and Kelly, you said about the life jackets. In order to go through a dam on the Ohio River, <clears throat> you have to have a life jacket on. So we had life jackets with us. Coming up to the dam, we had a radio ahead to the lock master to put us in line to go through the lock. And we had radios on board. Mm -hmm. So we had radios on board. We had life jackets on board. We had motors in the boats. Now, we also had band-aids and cell phones, which they didn't have in the original expedition. <laughs> no, but, they did not. But, you know what it was? Lewis was supposed to bring his cell phone. He forgot uh, his at home. <laughs> Our Lewis had one. I mean, but we're 200 years later. And big change. Uh, Colonel, big change. I got to ask you, you know, this was three years of your life, and... How does it amaze you that they were able to survive their journey? Yeah, you had all the modern stuff to keep you alive. Those men on the original journey were supermen. <clears throat> Believe me, they had no motors in their boats. But the rivers were different than what we have today. And I guess we were supermen too, you know, because we carried through exactly what they did. Our, our timeline was set by the original journals. If they did eight miles in one day, we did eight miles in one day. Ah. If they did 22 miles in one day, we did 22 miles in one day. Yep. We walked in their footsteps. Well, it's a fascinating story. Ah. And the, the colonel writes about it in his new book. It's called Lewis and Clark in the 21st Century. And he's here in St. Louis to, to talk about it. You can stop by and see him, not today, but uh, the next three days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, at the Discovery Expedition in St. Charles Building over there on Bishop's Landing. That's at 1050 South Riverside Drive in St. Charles, just steps away from where Lewis and Clark began their actual <laughs> expedition and where the colonel and his uh, recreator uh, colleagues uh, did exactly the same. Thank you so much for joining us Can here Can I today. cover one more thing? One more quick thing. Okay, one more thing is to be a member of our reenactment, you had to portray someone on the original expedition. Yes. I was portraying Private Hugh Hall. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Private Hall is from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. So mm -hmm. I'm portraying a fellow Pennsylvanian, and that is cool. Very nice. Thanks again. It's cool having you here. Yeah, Colonel Ed Scholl. The book, again, is called Lewis and Clark in the 21st Century. He'll be in St. Charles the next three days. Details are on the KTRS Facebook page.